like this everybody we've got a couple oh, empty seats there are people on break right now does anybody know okay I'll start at oh okay all right well for for the sake of time i feel like i should start because you guys are all on time so and i know that everybody's gonna gotta go to the bathroom one way or another or do whatever you gotta do but um I'll give it uh, two more minutes until, well, now one more minute until 2.20. So then we'll start up. Everybody's okay with that. Sure. How's it going, Jess? Good to see you. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to be here. I know. Your mom uh, texted me yesterday. She said to Adam and I, you want to come? Yes. Sweet. Is Adam going to be here too? He was. He has a experience since 10. It's probably been a long day for yeah. everybody. <laughs> He's like, oh, I have a I'm already. So. Yeah. So he committed to working for me. All right. Well, we got a few people online too. So, uh, yeah, as soon as it turns 2.20, I'm going to get started because I know some people on here are probably waiting. And it doesn't hurt to just jump in. You know, so let's see here. All right. All right, guys, it's officially 2.20, so I'm going to get started. Um, for those of you that haven't uh, met me before, my name is Drake Duckworth. I work with New American Funding here. I'm an in-house lender here at this market center, and I'm, my office is located right across from Ann. So whenever you get paid, don't feel, hesitate to knock on my door, ask any mortgage questions, or just say hi. So let's get started. Today, I'm going to talk about our NAF Cash program. So it is essentially a cash offer program. We're able to turn your buyer into a cash buyer um, and essentially maintain traditional financing at the same time. And so um, it's an awesome program. Uh, we've been... We actually created at the height of COVID um, in 2020. And this was a, a tool that we were using because of how hot the market was at the time. And, you know, it's still, some could argue that it's still pretty hot yet. But at the time, it was just so crazy that we needed something to set ourselves apart. And cash buyers were beating all of our first time home buyers. And so we said, what can we do to, you know, change that and, and to help them? stand out and you know get their offer to the top of the pile and so what we did is we we uh, worked on a program where like i said before is we're turning them into a cash buyer and how it works is essentially we buy the property for them in cash so there's two transactions and so we purchase the property and then we sell it back to them on the second transaction with a 1.9 percent convenience fee and so the nice thing about that 1.9% convenience fee is that it can be rolled into the loan 
So it's not going to be a cash out of pocket. And um, what we found is that, uh, you know, in doing so in making a cash offer, we're able to uh, a lot of the times come down below the list price. Uh, and so, you know, just to get, give you guys a uh, real world example, I just had a uh, closing here last Friday. Um, offer was at 500,000. Well, rough numbers is actually at, you know, four something, some change, but let's just use some even numbers here. $500,000 purchase price or list price. And our buyer was able to come in at 480. So 20,000 low. And they're competing with 15 other offers. And our seller prioritized a quick closing. We're able to close in as little as seven days with this cash out program. And so we, you know, that coupled with the fact that we had a non-contingent offer, cash offer, won us the deal. Over 14 other offers who were up and up over, you know, I'm sure some were at list price at 500,000 and some were probably over that. And so we got a sweet deal for our buyer. And again, we closed last Friday on the second transaction. And uh, good news for you guys is that you get paid on the first transaction. And so um, just to kind of give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, I'm just gonna go through some of these slides. Um, and, oh, you know what, actually, let's start with the video because I do have that ready to go here. So let me uh, play this video for you guys. It's a short and sweet video, it's about a minute long, but it should kind of give you at least a preliminary idea of you know, how the transactions work. So hopefully the audio works too. So I'm not... It's a tough market. Okay. Yeah, home inventory is... Can you guys hear that okay? It's a seller's market. And cash buyers have the advantage. Recently, cash buyers made up more than a quarter of all home That's purchases. Right, hear, well... But we have the solution. Now, well, this is playing. Your buyers an option that you maybe hear the other Cash buyers okay. themselves. Here's how it works. NAF Cash, an affiliated company of few American funding, will purchase your buyer's new home with cash and sell it back to them for the original purchase price, plus a fee that can be added to the purchase of the home. Once they secure mortgage financing, the best part is that they don't need to sell their current home first. This is the cash offers. Plus, there are no fees for agents and no sacrificing commissions. That cash even offers a free one-hour certification course that will make you the expert. You want to close more deals and help more clients? That cash is the answer. Yeah, it should be. Well, this what happens when you get any <laughs> seriously everything. Oh, okay. Is that well, you guys let's see? Uh, I was doing an, that video right there. Yep. <laughs> All right, there we go. You want to save the well, no, it is. is that as loud as it goes? On that one, yeah. I don't know why it's not. Where's the roll for the TV? Yeah. That up. There you go. It's already up. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for bearing with us through the technical difficulties. Let's try this again. It's a tough market. We get it. Home inventory is at the all-time low. It's a seller's market, and cash buyers have the advantage. Recently, cash buyers made up more than a quarter of all home purchases. But we have the solution. Now cash allows your buyers to compete by becoming cash buyers themselves. Here's how it works. Now cash an affiliated company of New American Funding, will purchase your buyer's new home with cash and sell it back to them for the original purchase price, plus a fee that can be added to the purchase of the home. Once they secure mortgage financing, the best part is that they don't need to sell their current home first. This is a true cash offer. Plus, there are no fees for agents and no sacrificing commissions. Now cash even offers a free one-hour certification course that will make you the expert. 
close more deals and help more clients? Now cash is the answer. All right. So by the way, I have good news for you all. Um, because I am conducting this training today, uh, you guys will all receive a certification, so you won't have to go through the hour-long course. Now, granted, this might be close to an hour long, but at least you don't have to sign up and deal with all that, you know, BS. So uh, that's the good news. So yeah, actually, and they usually don't allow me to do that, but today I was able to do that. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, yeah, that's uh. It's nice because, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to cover all the bases just like they would and you get the certification. So, um, but uh, just make sure we um, make sure I, if you're interested in getting your certification, just provide me with your name. If I don't, if I've never met you before, if I, um, or actually I really just need your email so I can send you it. So, okay. Back to, here we go. All right. So, uh, again, just to kind of highlight some of the benefits here, you're able to make that cash offer. Um, your your buyer is able to, well, and your seller, if they've got a home to sell, is able to um, make a non-contingent offer upon financing or the sale of their home, which is huge. And also, you know, they don't have to qualify for both properties. They only have to qualify for the one property. So that's a, a big um, advantage for a lot of uh, sellers who have a home to sell and they want to buy before they have to sell. Um, we can qualify you for just the, the new home and we don't have to include your previous departure residence. So uh, we found that that's a, a big advantage, especially for, again, these, you know, these sellers who are looking to make non-contingent offers and, you know, who might have debt to income ratios if they weren't to use a program like this otherwise. Um, and so, and then on top of that, like I said, you know, you might be able to ne negotiate under the ask price. Um, you know, you can buy before you sell. Uh, oh, by the way, we include uh, what's called a one and oh buy down for their first year, meaning, you know, if rates are at, let's just say they're at uh, 6.99 today, they're going to get a 5.99 interest rate on us for the first year. So that's huge. Helps uh, a lot with, you know, these high interest rate talks that we're having these days. So, you know, being able to tell your buyer that, you know, hey, you're getting a 5.99 interest rate. Um, I think that does wonders in and of itself for in terms of marketing for you guys. Um, and you don't know how many phone calls I've gotten um, just this year, just because of this one and oh buy down, because I'm able to tell people that I've got interest rates in the fives and they're all, you know, my phone's ringing off the hook because they want to know more about this cash off program. Um, and then, uh, a complimentary five-year rate protection pledge to couple with that one and oh buy down is huge because, you know, after, from the, the point of sale, five years thereafter, they have uh, a little to, essentially, we can't say free refinance, but little to no cost refinance because we remove all the repeat fees, like, you know, underwriting, processing, appraisal fees, all that good stuff. And, you know, and that's another thing to kind of ease the nerves of some of these buyers or sellers who are like, Hey, I've got a 4% interest rate. You know what, why would I, why would I sell right now? Well, you can get a one and oh buy down and you can get a five-year rate protection pledge on top of it um, to help you, you know, um, get that rate down. Couple questions on that five-year rate protection. Is that only one time? One time use. Good question. Yep. Um, and then like mortgage registration tax, even though that's a repeat cost and still have to pay that twice. Um, the mortgage registration tax, yeah, they would have to pay that. Um, but yeah, just like processing, underwriting, some of those. So that's kind of like the asterisk, little to no cost, you know, or removing, you know, most of the repeat fees, but that's one that we can't control. The other question I have is you said they don't have to sell their house, but what if they have a ton of equity that they're going to use as a down payment to so mm -hmm. buy their house with cash, the first house? And now we have to wait for their house to sell and close so that they can now do the purchase through you mm -hmm. with the mortgage. Yep. And, and how long do you go into wait? Um, you know, uh, we'll, we're, uh, I actually do have a slide about kind of talking about the uh, periods of if it, if it gets, you know, elongated and it starts to, you know, drag on and, you know, we're talking 90 days down the road, then we have some, you know, things that we do. We, it's, it's kind of like a, 
come to Jesus moment where we're all, all parties are just like, Hey, what's going on here? You know, we need to do something different. Um, you know, is it the market? What, what can we do to, you know, tackle this and maybe approach it differently. And so, and then on top of that, you know, there's a, a kind of, it's a incentive essentially to motivate the, the, the buyer to, you know, do, you know, do we need to, you know, lower the purchase price or something? So there's a 10% kind of fee um, that we're going to get into again. Uh, we uh, getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but we're going to talk about the rent back schedule because, because there are two transactions here, one where we buy the property for them. You know, again, let's use that seven day timeline. So um, accepted offer, they move in seven days um, from today. And then at that point, they would incur a rent back schedule so that, you know, they're going to, we're going to be paying taxes and all this kind of stuff. So we have to, you know, get some of those costs back. And so we have that rent back schedule in place and it increases by 10% after 90 days. So that's kind of the motivation to, Hey, you know, we don't really have much time to fool around. So if you want to get this thing sold, you know, what can we do to make that happen kind of thing. And so I hope that answers your question. Um, that's there, there is kind of a timeline to, you know, kind of push them along if, you know, the rubber meets the road. <clears throat> so, um, so I think I touched on all these points. Um, let's see. So, yeah, we kind of talked about the, the benefits. Um, it's true cash offer. There's no finance contingency. There's no departing residence contingency. Um, so those are the biggest things. Um, and then, you know, there's cost savings too and convenience as well. You know, your buyer's able to uh, move in right away. And that gives you guys the opportunity to either A, do we need to, you know, stage this property? Uh, B, do we need to, you know, make some renovations potentially? You know, your buyer's out of your hair now. And so you can actually do a lot of those things. And, um, you know, um, with is, is uh, with a good amount of time to to take care of any of those, you know, little things that you need to do. Um, so the main thing that might hold your buyer back from, from a, um, let me answer your question just a second, from uh, purchasing here is that they need to have 30% equity in the home already. So they need to have 30% equity in their departing residence. And, you know, that's something that we've got an exception on, you know, if it's 25%, you know, anywhere to 30%, sometimes we can make an exception. And that's if we have, you know, enough reserves to do so or net, you know, enough net profit to do so in, in terms of the sale at home. <clears throat> what was your question? So are you only using buyers that are in the house to sell or can you send a buyer that has No, yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, if you uh, don't have a home to sell, you can absolutely do so as well. Um, you just, as low as 5% down is all you need to do this program. And, uh, you know, and, and but then, you know, we also are only limited to two uh, loan types that is conventional and VA. Uh, we can't do FHA, unfortunately, because of that 90 day uh, flip rule. So we, we would not be able to do FHA financing. But uh, to answer your question, absolutely, you can use this program, 5% down conventional, 0% down VA, if you'd like. Um, and you still get the rate buy down. So because I've had a buyer with thirty percent, but they're still losing out. Okay. So we can still get the five point zero buy down. Yep. Year. And then what is this guy here doing? Yeah, uh, you can re you can refinance at little to no cost. You know, we remove our processing fee, underwriting fee. You know, it's about fifteen hundred bucks in total, and then another five hundred for the appraisal. So they're saving about over 2000 bucks and, you know, fees and uh, in order to refinance within five years from when they close. And it's a one-time use. Yep. So just kind of going back here. Um, so in order to uh, qualify somebody, we need a couple things from you guys. Uh, again, just, I'm kind of uh, focusing on the fact that they have a departing residence here, just because that's, you know, where you run into the most uh, kind of hurdles. And so when it comes to, you know, not having a departing residence and they're just a buyer, uh, there's not much to it. So, you know, aside from the rent back schedule, but again, just going back to our scenario where you have a home to sell, uh, what we need from you guys is uh, A, a CMA and B, a net sheet. And that's really all we need from you guys, other than getting your certification, which you're completing today. And so, um, you know, how that works again, I'm going to kind of talk about the timeline here next you know, so that you guys can wrap your head around how this all works and, you know, uh, what needs to be done at what point. But 
Um, I, one other caveat too, is that the property has to be listed prior to the, the cash transaction closing seven days prior to it closing. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind. But uh, just to give you another real world example, I had an awesome deal that was set up. The agent was smart enough to think of this. Actually, I hadn't even done it like this before, but the agent was able to negotiate with the seller to be able to basically push back their first closing on the first leg um, about a month and a half. So we had a whole month and a half for our our seller to you know do everything that she needed to do to list her home, get it ready and, and, and ready to go before we actually came in and bought it a month and a half later. And what that did was it allowed her to get everything in order. Home was sold by the time we even got to the first transaction. And so then we were able to actually um, minimize her rent back and she actually paid zero dollars in rent back. And aside from a couple of days of utilities is, is all she paid. And so, I mean, it worked out great for her. And, you know, and so just keep that in mind because, you know, if we can structure it properly where, you know, um, maybe the sellers are willing to work with us and give us a little more time, you know, on that first transaction, we can, you know, minimize that rent back by a, you know, a big margin. So that's always great when it works out like that. Uh, so let's give you a kind of a timeline of how this is going to work. So we're going to get them fully underwritten up front. So, you know, they we need all the financials and, and they would have to sign a couple agreements. And our, we have actually a dedicated tra transaction coordinator that's going to help you out on these cash offer programs. Um, you know, I've had it where my agent has their own transaction coordinator and then our transaction coordinator are kind of teaming up to work together and works out great. Um, but so we get them fully underwritten, um, you know, and so it's all signed off on and good to go. And then now you're submitting that, you know, cash offer. And so then, you know, we're, we're showing our proof of funds, NAF cashes, and, um, and then, you know, let's say the offer is accepted. The buyer moves into the home right away. You get paid right away. And then, um, you know, and then it, it becomes down to the second transaction where we buy it back. And so now it's just a traditional financing transaction. Yeah. How does it work? Like, is the buyer still on the, on the purchase agreement and that's the proof of funds and the buyer's paying? Yeah. Like, how does that work for closing? Good question. Um, so um, it, it's uh, it's in our name. It's in uh, NAF Cash LLC's name on the first transaction. Um, I think I have a slide on that, I'm trying to find it here. But uh, nonetheless, Great question. Yeah. So we would be listed as the buyer. Um, we provide our own proof of funds in our name. Um, so, you know, again, to just to legitimize the transaction, showing that we're, you know, legit, we've got, you know, cash funds to, to show for. Um, but one thing too, that I want to mention is that a uh, home inspection is required on that first transaction. So there would need to be a five day contingency period where, you know, we're ensuring that, you know, there's, nothing wrong with the home because we did get burned in the past where, you know, um, inspections, you know, we were able to actually waive the inspection too. You know, everything was great. Um, but then the buyer moves in and they're sitting in the home for 30 days and they're really, you know, digging around and trying everywhere. And they want to know that, you know, they have a sound and safe investment come to find out, you know, that there might be bigger issues at hand. And so then they get scared and then we, you know, lose our, our end and, you know, and so that didn't work out great. So now we require that home inspection to protect us, both the buyer and uh, the lender as well. So, so does the buyer sign some kind of agreement with them cash that you guys are buying this property on their behalf and then they, uh, yeah. Yep, yep, good question. So um, that is a part of the uh, underwriting process up front. We do make them uh, sign a buyer participation agreement to uh, ensure that they're aware of all the moving parts and and uh so we make them watch a video and then have them read through a transaction or sorry read through a, a an agreement with our transaction coordinator helps them understand that process uh one thing to keep in mind too is that if there is there has been an inspection that's already taken place within 90 days we can actually use that so if we can save the buyer some money there you know we are able to use that yeah um you know, so we tried to get away with that at one point and they shut it down, but I've heard, uh, that was like four months ago when we tried that. I've heard recently that somebody was able to, we were able to get an exception. I'm not exactly sure how they got that exception. 
Um, but I will look into that and see if I can find out what exactly, you know, was it that they had, you know, they, they, there was so much money involved where they're comfortable making, you know, we're, we as a lender were comfortable making that exception. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but we tried that in the past and it didn't work. So I want to say no for now, but I will look into that to double check. What about, I mean, if the buyers, if the buyers want to put it up the room screen? Yep. Yep. So then why would you have the buyer also on the interest rate that you do that? It's because like some people want an order, you know, like it's foreclosure, they're only looking at an order and I can buy it off. Yeah, we, we can't do foreclosures with this, with this uh, loan program. Um, and so really we can do primary residence, um, owner occupied, uh, we can do condos, townhomes, we can't do rural, we can't do, um, what do you mean by rural? yeah, it's, it's kind of, uh, uh, it, it's, 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 it's a little, it's a little, you know, gray area when it comes to rural, because, uh, as we know, you know, with USDA, it's really almost the entire state of Minnesota that's rural, aside from, you know, those pockets in Mankato, Duluth, and, you know, the metropolitan area obviously, but, um, so when it comes to rural, it's more so, um, you know, income producing, you know, or if they have, you know, uh, tillable land, that sort of thing. So like an acreage property? Maybe? Acreage property, we would consider for sure. Um, yep. As long as there's not any tillable land or they're, you know, they're not trying to, um, you know, get 50 acres with silos and all kinds of outbuildings. Right. Um, but we have made exceptions for, you know, 10 acre land where, um, you know, there's various things going on, but I, I say all that to say that it's basically a case by case basis. Yep. So we would, in general though, you know, uh, I wouldn't get too scared about that because there are plenty of properties that are, you would think are in rural areas that aren't considered rural properties. Right. Um, uh, well, we, we put up the earnest money, uh, but we, they do put it in, you know, escrow as well simultaneously. So we are putting it up on our end and they're putting it up on the second transaction. So um, that's uh, the way that it's structured just in terms of protecting the lender. Yep. Uh, let's see, let's go. So basically everything in that first transaction is just now and then the buyer really comes in the second. Yep, yep. That's a good way to break it down. It's pretty much all just nap cash on the first uh, leg and then it's all the the buyer on the second leg. Um, surprisingly, I feel like most people they're just like cash offers, cash offer, and you know we haven't had any pushback on that yet. So that at least on the transaction that I've done, I'm sure somebody kind of is like, hey, what's going on here? You know, like you guys are you guys are a traditional mortgage lender. You you doing cash now? Like how does that work? Um, and I've had those questions come up and, you know, um, I, I guess I have the, the questions come up where it's like, um, like this is a cash offer. Um, are you guys, you know, can you guys back that up for sure? And then we just show them the proof of funds and, you know, all their forms are, you know, answered, but, um, what was that? Um, so yeah, I mean that that part is pretty straightforward when it comes to um, credit score, six hundred and twenty minimum. Um, you know, five percent for conventional, zero percent for uh, VA, obviously, and then uh, just a couple touch points here. The three percent earnest money is required up front, liquid, um, for conventional, and then for VA, it's only one and a half, uh, one one point five percent earnest money up front, um, and then. Again, that liquid, those liquid funds, as you know, obviously go towards the transaction. Um, gifts are acceptable to cover that earnest money deposit upfront, which is great. Um, and so again, just to reiterate this process, there are two earnest monies um, needed for this process and the buyer's only responsible for the buyback earnest money on the second transaction. But again, both escrows are open simultaneously. Um, so um, this kind of just gives you an example uh, we kind of already talked about that. Uh, for the state of Minnesota, the convenience fee is 1.9%. So let's just say on a $500,000 purchase price, that's about 9,500. Again, that can be rolled into the loan. So that'll be tacked on to the second transaction. So the purchase price on the second transaction would be 5095. Or... Yep, yep. Um, good question. It is the convenience fee is based on the purchase price. And so, 
again, we find that, uh, you know, on average, we're saving our buyers, you know, uh, anywhere from 4% when it comes to uh, anywhere from four to five percent when it comes to savings, you know, in terms of coming in lower than the list price, and so that one point nine percent is, uh, we find that the the buyers are, you know, the, it, it's an easy pill for them to fall when they see the the price difference, um, especially when it's not out of pocket. Um, so just again, just to kind of give you an idea, um, this is actually using the convenience fee for California, just because this is our standard presentation, but um, it would be a one point nine percent convenience fee. So again, that would be um, 9,500 in that case. And this just kind of gives you, it's like a savings calculator to show a finance offer at 500,000, um, you know, price difference of 4%. So again, they're saving them 4% in, you know, uh, savings if we were to get a cash offer at 480. Um, and so uh, it works out great. Does anybody have any questions so far? All right, just kind of moving along here. Um, just because I, I see we only have 13 minutes until three o'clock. Do they have until three o'clock or 3.15 to you guys? Oh, okay, great. All right, so I got more time than I thought, sweet. Um, and so again, you know, on that transaction, we have a dedicated transaction coordinator. Um, they will reach out to you with instructions on how to, you know, fill out the purchase agreement so you don't have to be, you know, concerned about any of that. Um, and we kind of touched on this already, home inspection is required. Um, you know, if there's uh, any replacements that the buyer is not willing to take on, then, you know, they have this opportunity during the inspection period to back out. Um, there's a, a big thing too, uh, regarding the appraisal that I want to touch on. Um, so there's a couple of different things revolving the appraisal and how it works. So when submitting your offer, Initially, actually, even before you submit your offer, we can do an automated um, valuation model or ABM. And we do that because we want to give the buyer an idea of, you know, what they're getting themselves into in terms of, you know, if we were to get an accepted offer at 500000 and then it appraises at 480 later on, you know, they would be obligated to come up with that appraisal gap. And so on the second transaction. So that's why we do um, several appraisals in the preliminary phase, because we want to protect the buyer and make sure that they're comfortable with, you know, those numbers. And so, uh, so just again, just to kind of um, explain. So before you even submit your offer, we can do that ABM to, to allow you and, and the buyer to understand, you know, where your offer is at in terms of what our valuation model is telling us. Um, that way, if they're if it's like ten thousand difference, and they're like, "Hey, I don't want to come up with you know an extra ten thousand. Um, I don't have the money to do that." Then they can you know back out at that point, or you know, like I said before, the offer's even made. You know, they don't even have to make an offer. Um, but if the ABM is comes in low, then we have the option to come in with a desktop appraisal, which we would pay for, and that gives us a much better idea. Um, it's it's much more accurate than an ABM. And at that point, we're going to have a better idea of, you know, we have a, a solid idea if there's going to be any price difference between the actual appraisal later on and then, you know, your, your offer price. And so, um, you know, that's uh, a great way to be able to determine if there's any risk involved. And then again, they have that option to back out if they don't, aren't comfortable coming in with that appraisal gap. Um, and so just to, to clarify, the the earnest money deposit is non-refundable after the first transaction uh, closes. So they have have up until that first transaction of closing to you know uh, if they they weren't comfortable with that. You had a question. Again, uh, going back to the inspection, it's required. You're buying it, but buyers are obviously going to be at the inspection and paying for it. We come up with some issues that are we negotiating that on behalf of you guys buying it. Uh, that's a great question. You um so no, you guys would you know as long as there's not any major repairs needed, you know, like a new roof that's going to cost twenty thousand dollars or something like that, or you know something that's uh uh you know an immediate hazard then you know that's up to you guys to negotiate and figure out and and uh structure it however you'd like um we're able to do that and even if it costs the seller money or we have to do escrows or anything like that you guys are open for that yep yep okay. and if it, even if it is a big cost and you're able to negotiate that with the seller and they're willing to cover the cost or even if the buyers 
willing to kick in the money required. You know, as long as everybody's happy, uh, we're happy. So, yep, good question. Um, okay, so now on to the second transaction. So, you know, now just to reiterate, we bought the property for your client. They're all moved in. Um, and now we're, we're doing a traditional loan at this point. So we're going to buy it back from the, the buyer and, or yeah, the buyer and, um, and it's just all, you know, business as usual at this point, there's really nothing unique other than the fact that they do have that rent back schedule, um, which I'm going to cover here in just a second. Um, so, you know, for example, if the purchase price is anywhere between 400,000 to 500,000, uh, the rent back would be 2,800 bucks a month. But the nice thing is it's per diem. And so, you know, 2,800 bucks per month is 93 bucks per day. So, uh, it's, it's not all that bad, especially if we can, you know, line it up strategically where there's not a whole lot of rent back, um, that's going to be incurred. But uh, again, this kind of reiterates that point where the rent will increase by 10% each month after 90 days. And, you know, and after I've actually never had it get to 90 days. So I don't know, um, you know, we haven't encountered that, at least on my deals. Um, but if it does come to that point, then again, that would be where everybody comes back to the drawing table and we're like, hey, what do we need to do to, you know, get this thing sold? So that way you're not getting you know, more and more rent back, you know, added up and, and, uh, getting, uh, you know, screwed on that. Cause obviously that, that could be a big deal if it's over nine days now that we haven't sold the property, but, um, so, oh, again, uh, just to clarify too, on the second transaction, we can get an appraisal waiver. And so, um, actually I just had one on my last deal. Um, appraisal waiver is always nice, especially because a lot of the times, you know, to your point, they are rolling in the net proceeds from the first transaction on the second transaction. So a lot of the times they're already putting 20, 30% down. And if we're already putting 20% down, there's a good chance that we're going to get an appraisal waiver. So that's always an added bonus, saves your, your borrower or your buyer about 500 bucks. Um, so, you know, we have that benefit too. Um, let's see. So we kind of touched on the one and no buy down, you know, um, it, temporary lowers your interest rate by 1% for the first year. And that is paid by NAF cash. So it's paid by the, the seller in this case. So there aren't any other additional fees. Um, Five-year rate protection pledge, we talked about that. And other than that, you know, usually we're talking about getting your certification, but you guys are now in fact certified. So Nothing really else for you guys to do except uh, give yourself a round of applause because you're NAFCAS certified. And then on top of that, we kind of already talked about this, um, but what do we need from you guys uh, when there's a departure residence? We need that CMA, we need a net sheet, and then you know we need your NAF certification. And so um, that's really all we need. So you said you had a buyer who is looking to put 30% down. And did you, men did you say that they don't have a home to sell? They're just trying to buy? Yeah, they don't have a yeah. So, you know, this program would sounds like it'd be great for them, especially since they don't have to worry about selling a home. They can just move right in in seven days. And, um, you know, that would be I'm sure that'd be fantastic for them. So uh, connect with me after this if you're interested in, you know, getting more information. Okay. Yeah. Question. No, I was just thinking about the qualifications like needed. So like if they have 30%, I mean, they still also have like that credit score that you were talking about, like, what was that? Six, 620. Yep. Like that. So you have to hit all those parameters. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Good question. You still have to uh, qualify for a conventional loan um, if they're going to go that route or VA if they're going to go that route. Um, and so you'd still need to reach that minimum FICO score and, and then, you know, and everything else too. So Good question. Um, I think that's all I've got for you guys. Uh, so maybe I can get you out of here a few minutes early. Um, I do actually have some marketing materials too that I kind of want to show you uh, since I've got you. Were there any other questions that anybody had? All right. Yeah, I know. Uh, usually it's, it's, uh, 
I mean, it's it's a very convoluted program. Yeah, as you can probably see, there's a lot of moving parts. So it's not straightforward. So don't hesitate to ask any questions. But I think a lot of you have asked all the kind of uh, major questions that usually we're trying to cover. Um, so good on you guys for getting that all taken care of. But uh, let's talk about different ways to market this program. So if I can get this to go. It's working up there, but it's not working down here. Nope. Okay. All right. So um, these are just some marketing graphics that we can co-brand with your information. So, you know, I'd have, you know, you'd be here, I'd be here, vice versa. And, you know, this isn't that, you know, um, remarkable of a graphic, but just letting you know, we have all kinds of different things in our portfolio. Um, so for example, this is a little bit better of one that kind of gives you an example. So, you know, we can brand you and I on there and essentially, you know, it just talks about the benefits of, you know, buying before selling, no contingencies, you know, remove the hassle of having to, you know, coordinate two moving trucks potentially, um, or, you know, paying for storage or paying for a hotel or any of those, you know, um, additional costs. Um, and we've got flyers, postcards, yard signs, you name it, we've got it. You know, we've got a whole marketing team that can come up with other things. If you want to, if you know, if there's a point that you want to get across, we can customize graphics and, you know, put your information on there too. Um, we've got videos as well. Um, it's kind of, what was that? When you guys submit the offer, are you just working with the agent that the buyer is working with? I'm sorry. You're... Like when you submit like a purchase agreement, yeah. are you submitting like a standard Minnesota purchase agreement or are you doing something else? Yeah, it's it's a standard Minnesota purchase agreement. Um, a lot of times, you know, agents will just use their own purchase agreement. And then we, you know, whether that's us adding ourselves as the buyer, you know, NAPCASH LLC and um, I'm pretty sure that's really just the only thing that we need to add in there. And then, you know, the inspection contingency, you know, on our end. Um, and then we need to sign it and everything too. But I so think from a compliance standpoint, from the brokerage, do you guys sign on to the agent as, as a buyer or not? Um, I think so. I think it is structured that way as, as a buyer's agent. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how we're labeled and listed in the purchase agreement. Um, but I usually defer to my transaction coordinator and the NAFCASH team to handle those questions, but um, I'll absolutely make note of that. And yeah, that's my question. Well, and then uh, part of that too is that um, sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of you guys just doing your normal contract. And I've had it in cases where, you know, we already have an offer accepted and we're just trying to flip it over to NAFCASH. And it's just a matter of us, you know, initialing the purchase agreement. So I know it's not all that complicated. Um, but I will make sure that I, I understand that, you know, fully. So that way I can get back to you on that. Um, I'll make a quick note of that real quick. Yeah. So like in this office, we have, you know, buyer disclosures, contracts, these are required documents for buyers. So somebody in your TC maybe knows about what those forms are and then how, like I say, it's, you're not really the buyer, you're the buyer, but you're representing the other buyer. So right. to get through the world for requirements. Like, yeah, I'm like, do you guys sign an arbitration or do you not sign an arbitration? I don't know those details. I'm sorry. Mike does probably. Um, the broker, He's we've done a couple of NAFCASH deals now um, in, at this market center. So I'm sure. He's like Mike sticks for NAFCASH. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, oh, and I'm sure Nikki knows too. Yeah. She's done a few of these. So, okay. um, but uh, again, I'm going to make note of that so I can get that back to you if, if they don't have the answers for you. So, um, okay. And then, yeah, just a couple other slides. I mean, like I said, we've got all kinds of stuff for you guys to market this. Um, you know, we've got real templates, uh, captions for it, um, all kinds of flyers. You know, we could even do a NAFCASH class. Um, and yeah we have uh actually another thing too is that we have a co-branded flyer with all of NAF's programs on it that you know all of our unique programs so you know when it comes to NAFCASH 
uh, as a program, our rapid rescore program, our um, our UQAL program, which might go in one year, not the other, um, if you haven't heard it before, but it's essentially it's a $500 credit, credit repair program that we have. Um, we have all kinds of different unique grant programs and down payment programs that are proprietary to NAF. So if you're interested in a flyer like that, you know, co-branding with me and you on it, I'm happy to provide that for you. Um, but other than that, if there's not any other questions, I think you guys are free to go. Um, but this is an awesome program. Um, just kind of, let me give you one more real example here of a NAF cash deal that I did earlier this year. Um, we, so we had a, a, a cash offer um, that we were competing against. Actually, we had several cash offers and you know, this was just a, a actually just a buyer who um, didn't have a home to sell. So he's just uh, he was a first time home buyer, didn't even have a whole lot of money saved up. But uh, his mom was helping him out and she was willing to gift him some money to come up with that three percent liquid earnest money up front. because He didn't have it. And uh, we got him moved in in, in uh, 14 days. So really quick turnaround. Um, and. Again, he got his offer accepted going up against two other cash offers. And I can't remember how many other offers were on the deal, but you know, it was quite a few. And he was thrilled because, you know, 14 days, I mean, he wasn't even thinking he could afford a home or even get into a home, you know, probably a week before that until, you know, we talked and, you know, we got, um, you know, he, he hadn't even experienced the competitiveness of the market yet, but uh, his agent knew that he needed it as a first time home buyer. And just with his his setup, he wasn't going to be able to compete. And so this, you know, this was just a one and done deal. And, you know, he was thrilled. And um, I mean, we have all kinds of success stories with this program. So if you want to reach out to me and talk about, you know, some scenarios and, you know, think of whether or not it might make sense for your client, you know, you know where to find me or maybe you don't, but I'm right across from Ann's office and I'm happy to answer any questions for you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. And I think there's one more class after this, but I'm sure a lot of you guys are just exhausted. Thank you. We have a couple buyers of one specifically, he's a conventional wanting to do five to 10% down. We've written seven offers, lost out on all of them. We're going 25, 30, 40 over list, still not getting it. So he might be a good fit for this because we're losing to cash offers or houses with no inspection. But if it's cash with inspection, I think we would have a better chance at it. Yeah. So I'm gonna to talk to him about it. Okay. This is hard because you know I've had a loyal loan officer who's written seven, you know, yeah. approvals sure. and really worked with this guy, but I feel like, you know, I represent the buyer. I gotta do what's best for the buyer. Mm -hmm. So um, but I, I can see that with even some houses I have where people are not sure what they want to do because they have a house that they've refinanced at three percent. Mm -hmm. Sure. But they have equity, they can't afford two houses, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yep. Yeah. And I feel, I find that that's always, you know, kind of the straw that breaks the camel's back when, you know, yeah. people, they can't, you know, make, you know, another offer because of the DTI or they can't, you know, they're just not getting not, you know, contingent offers accepted. You know, that's usually when, you know, agents or buyers will come to us and like, hey, you know, we need to try something new. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, and I know that I know how it feels on the other side of that when you, know, you feel like you put in all this work. And so, you know, I definitely don't want to step on anybody's toes, but if it makes sense, like you said, you represent the buyer. So you know, I'd be happy to help if. Well, I'm going to talk to my lender friend and just let him know. I, he knew, I asked him, I go, do you guys have anything like this? I'm going to a class on this. And, the, and they offer, that's with Fairway Mortgage. They offer like a, a guarantee cash. Like if my buyer for any reason couldn't buy the home, then they'll guarantee it. So it's, you know, it's a guarantee to buy the house if my client doesn't come through with the sure. financing. So heard of those. Okay. Yeah. But if that's different than this, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sherry. Um I I'm gonna go grab a couple real quick. I'll be right back. Yep. Thanks everybody on Zoom. I think we have another, uh, I think my brother Dylan's coming up here soon, so. <laughs> we have another, we have another train. <laughs> so, 
I will leave. Actually, I got to close the Zoom here. I'm not sure how that's going to work uh, with Drew, but I'll make sure that you guys get set up again. All right. Thanks, guys. And um, so then it's like, reach out to see you. So um, I just, I'm showing houses today and tomorrow. I'm going to be active buyers. I've got four active buyers. So, um, obviously, I won't be around, so I should know by Friday morning, like, the that like, it will be fun. But I'm going to give them. Lanier, is that Yeah. All right. Nice to meet you. Yeah. your face on email and whatnot. Yeah. Well, how's it going? Is it Nisha? Good. Yeah. It's a long trip. I'm up here, but. Where are you? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. What is it like? An hour and a half, ten, hour and twenty. Okay. So, uh,